Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Justin Our GI Joe Show, episode number six. I am your host, Mike. I'm joined with Fred as usual, and we are doing our part into making GI Joe great again, pun intended. So, uh, Fred, tell them where they can find you at that famous one letter or one word name. It's Joe Battlelines, kids. It's Joe Battlelines on the on, as as a website on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google Plus, on Instagram. Um, you know, but but still not on Flickr. So, oh my goodness, not Flickr yet. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into one of our categories tonight, real quick, before we go to screen share, which is a uh, if you've been hiding underneath a rock and you didn't know that FSS 5.0 finished up. Uh, we do have, uh, I still have mine in package. Uh, as you can see here, with a new camera, mind you, I hope you all can see this greatly. Um, we got a Raptor, oops, spoiled it already, and GI Jane, which was already spoiled anyways. And then uh, it was uh, Steel Raven came in the mail uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, me personally, um, I, uh, I told myself I was going to sell uh, Raptor from the get-go. Don't want it, had no interest in it. Then our, our buddy over at um, uh, Chicken Fry Toys, uh, <laughs> I forget his name. JD? Oh, good old JD? John. John, yeah, and he had posted some pictures of a, a Raptor, and I was looking, I'm like, man, that Raptor looks really decent out of package. And then I got mine in the mail, and I looked at it like, man, I'm, I'm going to keep it. You know, I was really impressed with it. Still Raven, I planned on keeping it to begin with. And then uh, – the picture I saw online of uh, G.I. Jane, it looked like her face had been pressed with an iron. It was that <laughs> ugly. It looked really bad. It was horrible looking. Jane and, is not a great build. Um, they just used the helix head, you know, right. which which is kind of a flat face to begin with. Um, and honestly, it's not it, – it's close-ish. I've been doing some comic screen capping for the JBL reviews, you know, in advance. And um, Jane in the comic was always drawn with a bob. She had the glasses. Right. She was also always in a skirt, blouse, and a lab yep. coat. And let's face it, the club's not going to spend any money to do new legs. So, yeah. um, but um, on you know, it, looking back on it, and I was texting with back with Chris the other night, um, who I do the reviews with on JBL. And I think the club, if possible, they could have used the uh, Glenda head, you know, which was the pilot Scarlet head over again. I think that might have made for a better Jane. Right. Yeah, I am. Um, once and I also, the laptop screen is not painted. They they cheaped out on the inside. Oh, uh, well, did they? I didn't even. Yeah. I I didn't open mine. But yeah, I decided to keep them after all when it was all said and done because they actually looked pretty decent and. And for anyone going to JoeCon, which is in 11 days from now, um, uh, Adam Ritchie's, which is the uh, artist, uh, he did, I know he did G.I. Jane, uh, Darklon, um, I think Savo, and I think he did Steel, not Steel Raven, Raptor. He did a few of the cards. So if you want to get those autographed, you know, y'all can take those with you to get carded up, you know, autographed up by him. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our screen share and see if we can get this right the first time around. Probably won't. <laughs> um, Mike's got a new camera, guys. Be patient. Yeah, that's not the right one. Let's see. Hey, I think we got it right. Look at that. All right. Um, this is from Adrian Butler. He sent us some pictures. This is a... Kind of like, I don't want to say, I really don't want to use the word collection spotlight since uh, Josh uses it on other podcasts, but it's going to be kind of like a uh, show us your stuff spotlight. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Phrasing. <laughs> yeah, right off the, you know, I can think of it here. But uh, let's see, this is a mercenary. I guess I'm not familiar. Oh, that's Mercer. Mercer. Okay, I can't. The remember. original G.I. Joe Renegades. Okay. Yes. I like the I like the revolver there. That was sweet. So you got short views, fuzz. Oh yeah, kicking it OG thirteen. Yeah, a little blurry, but I can tell. I know that snake eyes. Let's go to the next one. Go to the next one. Okay, Scarlet. Ah, so he used the movie. 
Oh boy. I want to say it was like the cat. It wasn't casual, but it was the Scarlet that had been in the uh, BDUs. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, he used yeah. that head. <laughs> that looks good. All right. Display here of his vehicles. Some Cobra figures. Uh, ah, the fire bat. Yeah. I don't know why I can't get enough of that little thing. Really? I, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm a huge fan of the, the Hiss tanks. So I don't know why. I got a whole lot of tanks down here. Nice. Let's see what we got here. Oh. Uh. Yeah, everybody's fa everyone's favorite biker gang. Yeah, and a his tank. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, and Nemesis Enforcer in the background. It's kind of like okay. oh yeah, can we yeah. put him in there. Hey, we don't judge who's in your gang. Nice. Yeah. I like this here. The Destro. Of course, I love Destro. Is my favorite Baroness. I see there in the glare. Well, he's got the Weather Dominator, including yeah. the piece that everybody hated Hasbro for um, because that last comic, that last DVD pack was sh hardest to find. Mm -hmm. So the emitter with the crystal was always rare. Got a flag or a partial picture of one. You got, well, that's he's got, yeah, he's a little, uh, little custom build up there. Oh, okay, I see it now. Yeah, it's really good. But that's, you know what? Hey, um, flags are getting harder and harder to come by, oh, especially yeah. in good condition. Ah, there we go. There's some familiar faces. Oh, except for Timber, who's taking a nap. <laughs> he might have been euthanized. Timber. Oh, no. <laughs> Not Timber. <laughs> he was rabbit. Oh, and I see, see th these are the guys that got me into it in this slide. The originals, then the 83s, then the 84s. Yeah. That's a group of heartbreakers and name takers. <laughs> uh, this here is a vehicle. It's got a little... Oh, okay, he did a custom, a little custom job. I think that might, is that Indiana Jones truck? No, the door looks wrong. It still looks cool. Yeah. I'll give him that. There's a better picture of it that helps you. Oh, nice! I like how it has the uh, ch has the uh, chains on the tires. Yeah, that that almost could be a dreadnought vehicle. Yeah, almost, almost. The wooden green. Hey, they stole it. There you go. Or as Channing Tatum it's... said, they drive it like they stole it. They drive it like they stole it. Ugh, that movie. <laughs> It burns, sir. It burns. Now, this here is pretty cool. Um, I don't oh, know. Right. The Cobra, I, I'm assuming there was a guy who came by our room back in uh, 2014, and he was selling these, or he was getting them ready to make or whatever. And I just can't remember for the life of me if that was it or not. But that, that looks very similar to what he had. But I'm thinking that's something totally different. And you know what's funny is if you're ever looking – for a commercially available, well, now it's an eBay available, Cobra Commander Throne. A lot of these borrow from the, it was the god-awful animated Flash Gordon toy line, but there was a throne for Ming that mm. lit up. That was a purple Cobra head. Yep. And uh, those things are awesome as Cobra Commander chairs. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Playing Pac-Man can't go wrong. Playing Pac-Man. I thought that was pretty. Cool. I've seen this before, uh, something similar to this at Joe Con, one of the custom things. Uh, custom well, that's contest. the candy box. Um, there was some candy that came in these retro arcade consoles. Oh yeah, I and that's what that, that is. There's also, and it you you have to spend about forty bucks to get it now. But uh, a number of years ago, Hallmark did two different. Um, they did one a year for two years. They did classic arcade consoles that are actually one eighteen scale. Um, oh, cool. um, this the Pac Man was the first one, and the second one was Galaga. I think I used it in the um, the fiftieth heated battle set review because I'm like, oh, that that's clearly what the Heat Viper and Blowtorch are fighting over in their heated battle. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. You got a Space Invader ones. He's got Nine, a crowd. Yep. Yeah, got that's a, more of those candy boxes. Yeah, he's got a crowd going on. He must get the high score. So, 
that there is the last of the pictures and i'd like to thank uh, adrian butler for sending those in anyone who wants to have your uh you want us to show your stuff off uh just send me an email at autobot city toys t-o-y-z 1978 at gmail.com um just send uh, as many pictures as you possibly think it is for us to uh show your stuff off and and I'd even say we could we could open this up to diorama photography, custom oh, yeah. photography. Just basically, if you have Joe stuff and a camera and want the world to see what you've done, fire it over. Exactly, we'd love to show it off because that give us something else to kill time with besides listening to us two knuckleheads talk. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump over to. All right. Over here, the Facebook page. Just another GI Joe show has a Facebook page for y'all who do not know. Be more welcome to come over there and join it. We are going to start with. Let's. I want to start with the other set. Well, maybe I'll. Yes, look. here it is. The big, the big, the final reveals in which the club raced, raced to get them all out. Well, so that we could crap, subscribe. Oh, that's not working out too well. All right, we'll go start with this group. I didn't really want to. But for y'all who did not know if you're under a rock or whatever the case may be, uh, like Fred said, the club did race out to get us to sign up for FSS 6.0, which ended uh, Friday, uh, yesterday at uh, midnight Central Standard Time, which is uh, Texas time. And, um, uh, you know, they. this is honestly – I will be honest on this – is that this is the fastest I've ever seen the club, you know, put out something for us to get, you know what I mean, as far as reveals. Uh, I don't know if there was a deadline. Even when they did registration for JoeCon this year, they said it was going to go up by a certain date, and it did go up by a certain date. They weren't lying. So I don't know if they're being held to um, deadlines or whatever. But, you know, (laughs) but this is going to be our – our interpretation on what we think of these figures, uh, I would say don't let our our thoughts deter on your decision whether you are going to subscribe or not, because guess what? It's too late. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we're going to be brutally honest in what we think about these figures to, to a certain degree, because I want to see Savage next in a week and a half, so I don't want to be too brutal. But anywho, we will start off in the top left corner. This is the Eel Commander. Uh, oh, Gulp. Good old guillotine. Okay, I'm glad you pronounced it. Um, I'm the world's worst in Katan. <laughs> I can't pronounce shit. Guillotine, for those of you who are keeping score, um, originally came out, I believe it was in 2006. He was a new character in a six pack. Um, back in the days when you could spend 20 bucks and get six figures, it was amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was uh, Plague versus Steel, Steel Brigade versus the Plague. And in it, so in it, it, you got two Steel Brigade, um, well, actually, you got three Steel Brigade characters, including one of them based off of the guy who won the um, FHM contest to get his face on a Joe, um, which became Red Zone. And then you got these these plague uh, troopers. And two of them were masked and, you know, were fairly generic, <laughs> which was Grim Skull and Gallows. But Guillotine was the, was the other one. And... Uh, so he was bald, um, had the removable eel-esque mask at that point, and um, he was based, if I remember, on an already existing body of the Cobra Coils, which was like a motorcycle driver from the Bella versus Venom era. And Guillotine didn't really show up in anything until uh, until the end of the Devils Do G.I. Joe America's Elite run when they did that uh, World War Three crossover and they introduced the plague there and the plague was supposed to be <laughs> Cobra's alternative to the original <laughs> film shows. So uh, uh, instead of a squad of, you know, uh, Viper number 422, get up here. It, they were all going to be specialists with unique names. And so Guillotine was kind of their de facto field leader. Um for this one, it's kind of surprising the club did. This is one of the few new helmet, uh, new heads in the entire FSS. Um, the body is the Pursuit of Cobra Snake Eyes, the one that everybody likes because he came with the two heads. And then the arms are from the, I believe, 
uh, the Retaliation Ultimate Co uh, Storm Shadow that came out. And then I'm willing to go on record and say that Silver Gun behind his right foot and that sword are just reuses of the old tooling uh, that was done back in 2006. Okay. He's very, he's very, he's a fan favorite. Um, I always thought he looked a lot like Mindbender, uh, you know, with, with just a little bit of a soul patch thrown in. I didn't think the head was really that unique. Um, but this has led to people freaking out going, oh my gosh, are we going to see the rest of the plague? I don't know, kids. It's the club. They've already done a lot of these characters, so they could just do a massive series of repaints. But mm -hmm. he, he is—he does look good. Um, it's weird because most of the eels have already been released in their wetsuits, and so here you have a guy clearly not. Um, he's just got the breather mask and that. But I think, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think he's—he was a—it was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, a lot of people were um, excited when this one was revealed. He—he uh, he looked. He, he's a very solid figure, I think. I think they did a pretty decent job with this one. In my, you know, for a character I never had. I mean, I mean, for far as I'm concerned, I mean, he'll be a keeper. I'll yeah. keep, you know, definitely. So, um, our next one to the right. Um, this one here is based off Devil's Due, I believe. Yes, it is. Uh, um, Verona. Verona is actually, if the head looks familiar, there's a reason. Um, this head was originally used in the Operation Bear Trap um, Joe Con 2012 set for October Guard Sniper Dana. Well, this is one time when I don't mind the club reusing a head because Verona is Dana. Um, in Devil's Due, Dana had, after the fall of the Soviet Union, you know, they, they ran into Dana on a mission where Flint and Baroness had both been kidnapped and by the Russian Mafia. And Dana ends up come. She she was part of that new crop of Joes they tried to introduce in the comic, where it was um, Mariner, Barrel Roll, Sergeant Hacker, Crosshair. It was Verona, and I'm blanking on the last one. But this is actually a pretty good build. I want to say the torso and arms are from the, at least the torso are from the is from the Cobra officer that Toys R Us released this year, the female cover officer. Uh, the legs are actually from the Alley Viper, I believe. Okay. From the uh, the Alley Viper that originally debuted with the Defense of Cobra Island set. So um, what's cool about Verona, it, it, she was kind of superhero-y looking. She had this weird, because Verona, I think, is Czech. For Crow, I think that was... It, Brandon Jur was the one that introduced her in the comics back then. But she's got a crow um, on her shirt. Uh, that's what that little red and white logo-y thing is that's under the web harness. And God, if the club, if you listen to this, kill that web harness with fire. Because the way that that is writing up under her right arm, she's not going to be able to put her arm down at all. Um... I know you like to throw web gear on things. I don't think that was the best choice. Other than that, her gear is decent. Um, she's she's listed as covert ops now. Uh, Dana was always the October Guard sniper before, so, um, and I don't know if those hands will be able to really snipe with that bullpup rifle, but right. I think she looks good. Yeah, uh, this one here. So people, if you are looking for an October Guard Dana, then Dana. <laughs> this here, you can save yourself a whole lot of money right here because you're going to get the head from the, that. Because I was just looking on eBay and couldn't believe how much she was going. She was going like she was fetching over two hundred dollars. The um the October Guard characters from that 2012 set are probably the priciest Jocon figures. Oh yeah. Um, of the modern construction. Um, I had posted a, a picture on Instagram I had shot a while back, and it was um, just the the modern the modern October Guard. And I think I had included Dragonski from the FSS in there, and someone said, like, holy crap, that's like a $1,000 group of figures. And I'm like, oh, ha-ha, that's really nice. And then I looked it up on eBay, and they were not wrong. <laughs> no, it's insane. Um, yeah, this is a, again, this is another keeper for me. I'll be keeping this one. Um, in, in fact, you know what, Mike, let's keep score so far okay. on this. I'm going to just, just, I'm curious. So we've got two figures so far. We both think are keepers. Okay. All right. So we're okay. I'm going to write this down. I, 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 I'll jot it. You got, I, okay. You jot it down. 
Okay, okay. All right, our next one, Cobra Worms Officer, or as I would like to refer to him, the Rocketeer. <laughs> I mean, He's, come on. Yeah. I, it's yeah. cool. It's cool looking. Um, I know off the top of my head, this is the General Mayhem from the best set ever made, which was Tiger Force in 2015. Me. <laughs> now, the head, I think I read somewhere someone was saying that I. Was that like a retooled vintage, or am I completely wrong on that? I think the helmet, um, it, my gut says that they're going to do removable helmet, and I can't remember the description off the top of my head, and then a balaclava head, mm -hmm. because that's what the original is, but that looks to be a recreation of the vintage Worms helmet. Um, it's funny, because Worms in the original was the maggot driver, um, <laughs> and now he's an officer. Um, but is he a gentleman? Um, and, and I, and I, I don't mind his accessories, you know, the sort of, um, Luger looking pistol and I, you know, on the little, uh, the piece of the Rise of Cobra console, uh, mm -hmm. you know, remote there, but damn it. Why the hell is he carrying a bomb? <laughs> I don't know. Like, He's got like, his accessory. It's hilarious. I, I loved funny. it when they did it with the zombie vipers. Um, the, a, a couple of years, not the zombie vipers, the toxo zombies a couple of years ago. Cause yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. Why the hell wouldn't I just take a zombie go? Here's a bomb. Good luck. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I just don't get it. Um, now yeah. this figure is interesting because he is the club. <laughs> I, sometimes I love the club and sometimes they make me make my head um, explode. But he, one of his accessories is listed as real cloth as God. He's got yeah, as God. So, yeah. So, because what they're doing is the worms, uh, the worms, the mayhem build was built on that Rise of Cobra Destro with a new piece over the top of him. So he has a shirt and tie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because, you know, this is one of those instances where, man, we're going to be slavish to our vintage accuracy, damn it. And so there apparently the club went out to a fabric store and got some stuff and is cutting it up because yeah, he's going to get an ascot that's going to sit underneath that jacket. Now, a lot of people are complaining that the jacket is crazy bulky. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it, it, it's the nature of the beast. Uh, it's, it's what it was for mayhem. I mean, it's yeah. Just, yeah, I mean, this is this is about the best we're going to get, kids. Um, the, our not, days and a lot of new tooling are kind of over. So, I mean, in all honesty, it's it's not a bad figure. Now, here's something I do want to point out that I find very interesting is that they list him as the Cobra Worms officer. Yeah. So does that mean future two pack, three pack set of worms? Oh, oh. You could know that, what? Could I just be? had a thought. What's that? And, well, it doesn't happen often, but um, <laughs> if the club, if the club were being clever, this year's convention set, you know, we know it's Battle Force 2000. We know it's a bunch of bats. They could do, but the thing is, his deco is exactly the same as the regular worms, but it would be cool if they just did a slight recolor, released the worms, in like a two pack at the convention set, and then oh look, then you have to get the uh, the officer as part of the FSS. Mm -hmm. Now the only way that would work though is if they had advertised what they were doing in the first place, and we know that <coughs> the club souvenirs are pretty much the most tightly guarded secret since the, you know what's really in Area Fifty One. So mm -hmm. they are. So every now and then you might get lucky and find something up on the Japanese website over there, but not that's year we haven't. We've heard a little bit of. You know, a couple of rumors on a couple items that we might talk about later on. But, uh, but I mean, that's what went through my mind when I saw this officer. So that means somewhere along the lines, there you would think there has to be a two or three pack, whether it be a convention set yeah. or be like what we got with the uh, the Cobra Trooper officers this year from the club. So, Mike, is he a keeper or a, or a pass for you? Oh, he's a keeper. I'm keeping right. him. Boy, that that I can't pass up on the Rocketeer. <laughs> For me, he's an oh, he's a, I I don't know yet because okay. again I I wasn't into the vintage line when the maggot came out, so mm -hmm. I don't have that nostalgia, you know, vibe on him. He looks he looks cool. He just he doesn't does. he doesn't look cobra with all those colors. This is when they started to stray into alternate color schemes. I like my cobra. I like my cobras with some with a lot of blue or black in them. So gotcha. 
All right, so now we go down to the next one, and this is Jonas Jeffries, which I don't – you can explain to me maybe that he goes by Ghost Rider, and yes. maybe because of uh, legal issues, they could not use the word Ghost Rider, or is this just the, the way they do it? He was the Phantom X-19 pilot, and um, so his original released co code name is Ghost Rider, mm -hmm. and he appeared in the comics, in the Marvel comics, which were also, you know, the people who published Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. I, from what I understand, I, I don't know if it was a verb. I, there was some weird agreement that kind of didn't go mm -hmm. very far, but it was like too late into production. So anyway, long story short, in the comics, they don't really ever refer to him as Ghost Rider. The, the funny thing about him is he's the Xandar of G.I. Joe. Nobody can remember his name. <laughs> and it's become a running joke. It's like, oh, well, good old what's his name? <laughs> um, Captain Jeffries, you know. Th there's an issue with him. It's near the end of the benzene uh, conflict. You know, the one where all a bunch of the Joes died. And it's him. And I want to say it's dial um, Slipstream is riding uh, Rio in the back of the X-19. And they're doing this low-level flyby. And, uh, yeah, it's Captain Jeffries. It's okay. just Captain Jeffries. So gotcha. Now um, he he comes with a, a, a is it a fabric scarf? Yes, because the original figure had a fabric <laughs> scarf. So this is where the rest of the fabric that the club is using for Worms Officer <laughs> is apparently coming from. Um, I gotta say his build is interesting because okay, to my eyes, the legs are from the Pursuit of Cobra um, General Hawk. The one that came up, which was re-released re in the 50th. The torso is that Pursuit of Cobra Duke that was also reused for um, Psych Out and, you know, and some others. The web, the, the jacket piece mm. is the web gear from Outback, um, from the 25th Outback. The arms, oh boy, I, I don't remember who the arms are from. So the head, however, should look familiar because this figure and the next figure are already reusing tooling from this year's Joe-Con set. Um, so and, did they use web gear to make it look like a jacket? Yes. Oh. He, he's using, I mean, it's, it, look, it, the, 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 the jacket and the, the web gear and the, the sleeves look pretty good to be a jacket. It's the, the chest piece is a little weird because he looked more <clears throat> like a pilot suit before. And this kind of doesn't, but honestly, I'm seeing the club kind of just going back through the same bucket of parts they've had the past few years and just reusing those. Um, it, it, from what we know, next year is the last year of the club, and I don't <laughs> see them, I don't see them. You know, really, uh, GI Joe is not a GI Joe Real American Hero is not a, pr uh, a priority for Hasbro right now at all. Um, they just announced recently. You know, it's going to be updated, reimagined, reinvigorated, re blah blah blah, and that's fine. But it just means a lot of these concepts are probably faded by the wayside. Um, mm -hmm. His head is the Battle Force two thousand uh, Joe Con two thousand seventeen blaster. So interesting. Um, it's a decent recreation. I got to say he's probably one of the ones that I really dig on this FSS, even with the head reuse. Um, there's no way we're going to get a new X-19 for him, but he does look pretty cool. Yeah, he is going to be a, uh, a maybe on my list. All right, so I'll put you down as a – you got one maybe. And just for you kids at home watching, uh, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. We've already seen where – you know, we've seen the photoshops of these heads for this year's uh, Joe Con set, and people had a conniption fit. But once they kind of showed us the pictures of actual in hand, they weren't all that terribly bad. Uh, they actually looked pretty decent, my, you know, the ones I like, you know. So, but that being said, we'll go to the next one, which is uh, everybody was wanting windmill. Everyone was moaning, bitching, complaining, windmill, windmill. We get windmill. We get Oh my goodness, we got this. That's what they said. Okay, okay. Um, I know the club always like, oh, you know, fan favorite, often requested. Yeah. If you requested windmill in any way, you deserve this figure. 
Um, I, I don't think anyone I've ever heard anyone request him. Well, so, no, I can see maybe they did request him, but I don't think they requested this version oh, of him. No, you know what this is? Okay, Fred's rant time. Oh no! You remember how when they did hit and run, and people complained because there were some certain higher profile fans, especially that were <clears throat> fans of hit and run. They didn't like it. It got changed. And then they did um, Spearhead and Max, and people were like, oh, no, the colors aren't vintage. You have to bring them back. And they changed it. And then, you know, Salvo, okay? The fans spoke up, and they changed Salvo. Yep. This is the equivalent of Night Creeper Leader, where <laughs> they released Night Creeper Leader, and, you know, God forbid, we don't go with the very popular... <laughs> The more popular 1993, the Tiger Force, the version that appeared in the damn comics. Nope. We go with the 94 LSU Minnesota Vikings colored version that nobody ever asked for except for the club designer who has a mat on for obscure color schemes. I am willing to bet nobody requested Fun School Windmill, period. Yeah. Um, he is, he is, well, I don't even have words. He's, he's well, terrible. You know, we had, we knew when we saw the avalanche head, we knew we were going to get a windmill. Oh, you know, was, hell yeah. We knew it was going to happen. Um, the build, I'm not, you know, too, I mean, as far as uh, the original, it goes directly by it. The, uh, the major overkill on this one is really the, uh, the helicopter pack. Well, and, and have you ever seen the, the fun school windmill? Yeah. Would they put that, we, we have to figure out why he's called windmill because he's, you know, originally he was a helicopter pilot. It mm -hmm. made sense. He came with the Sky Storm. Right. But in Fun School, he was a single carded figure. Well, why is this guy called Windmill? So they gave him a backpack with a rotor blade that just stood above his head and would spin in the wind. <laughs> it wasn't even like that he could fly with it. He just had his own windmill. <laughs> like, I don't have the words to describe how ridiculous this is. Yeah, and this. So, yeah. What the club did here is they took the same pack that came with from the Annihilators, which originally came with Matt Tracker, which the club has now reused twice. Um, they made it so that both both sides are handles now. There's no little gun pack anymore. It's just all handles, um, which is interesting because if he needs to use both hands to fly it, how the hell is he going to use that pistol? <laughs> um, and You're going to you wing know, it. Oh. And I mean, again, we're seeing 30th Lifeline torso. We're seeing uh, the the web gear or the the jacket piece. That is actually the same vest that came with the 25th Wild Bill that the club used with their adventure team figures. Oh, okay. Um, the the legs are Shadow Tracker. Um, God, I hate this figure so much. Yeah, I, um, I, you could definitely put me down on note on this one for sure. Um, yeah. He he was, I mean, like you said, the Night Creeper version of this FSS. He will be the one that you won't get your money back off of. I mean, sorry, club. I mean, I, I mean, I have to say to a degree, you know, we're not sitting here to, to dog the club completely, but I mean, you know, we're you know, not only are we collectors, we're you know, we buy these items. You know, we want to see our money to go to good use. Granted, we have to buy the whole series in order to get them. And you know, like I said, this one here, you know, there'll be someone out there who wants this. They'll pay 25, 30 bucks shipped for. And I'll be yeah. more happy. You heard it here first. I'll sell this for 30 bucks shipped to anybody who messages me and wants it. I will yeah. definitely let it go. I just personally, Club, I see where you, you had good interest at heart on this. Um, it was really not a great do, you know, great do, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. What are we doing for a no on this one? I, I just feel like with him, I, I know they want to reuse the head. I get it. Yeah. Um, I just feel mm -hmm. like there are other characters that would have been much better choices for with, with them running out of FSS, you know, going forward. This is probably not, you know, when you, when you have that wish list from the fans that you're whittling down, mm -hmm. he has got to He can't be that high. Um, who so. knows, but... All right, with that terrible uh, dumpster fire, let's move on to the next dumpster fire, which I call Dojo, which put me down for no. I already <laughs> got this one pre-sold to my buddy, oh. Dakota. He's already said, hey, you get FSS? Yeah. You want your Dojo? Hell no. 
And he was like, hey, man, I'll take it off your hands. Okay. He's all into the Ninja Force stuff and everything. Yeah. And, you know, this here, I consider him the Weird Al Yankovic of the figures. Um, he's just – I do not – I, I am not a fan of all the uh, the, um, uh, the 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 Ninja Force they did. There were a couple that they did the Cobra yeah. side I loved. This here just was. This isn't for me personally. He's not. He's not a great build. Um, you know, we're seeing the the legs are from the, the the legs are probably one of the best parts actually because the the boots and the legs are from the retaliation the first storm shadow that kind of modern update um the the rest of the torso like damn it it's that red ninja ultimate you know the 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 retaliation storm shadow yet again um he's got the web gear from the um the comic pack uh storm shadow but the head is what i want to talk about on this so the club is already telegraphing another figure with this head. I am going to put it, go down on record as this right now, either for next joke on or for next FSS. They're already telegraphing. Um, Dojo had a mustache. He had a little, he had, he had, he had the goatee thing going. He had the, <laughs> the ponytail, but Dojo's head, his mask was a, a very wide headband. It was a bandana that went all the way around. Now, this figure is wearing a mask. I mean, you can see he's got the mask. He's got the little narrow strap around the back. And he's ridiculously bald, almost as if he's being designed for a hat to go on his head. And if that sounds like Headman, kids, it is. <laughs> so I am willing to bet mm. that the club, as of now, has designed this tooling to be also reused for a Headman which would be really easy to do with that uh, body they've been using for Zaymot and for Joe Colton, and it was used for uh, Destro, the San Diego Comic-Con uh, Rise of Cobra Destro. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're looking at the future head man right here, and I'll tell you what, he's a maybe for me only because I want to try to complete Ninja Force, but I hate the club's uh, head choice on this so very much. Yeah. But as far as the weapons, you think the weapons are cool? Yeah, um, I don't remember seeing that crescent sword blade before, unless that was with the Temple Guardian <laughs> Snake Eyes. I'm trying to think. I think it probably was. Um, it just, I don't know. He just, he leaves me incredibly cold. And I'm only saying maybe because I want, um, because it's I'll complete Ninja Force. But right. eh. well, like I said, I am not into the Ninja Force by any means. My buddy is, so yeah. I am. This is something I'm not into. For some reason, <coughs> I can't. See. Hold on a second. <coughs> see, Dojo gave Mike a cough. Oh God, it was the smoke off that dumpster fire. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not very happy with it. So that, like I said, that's just me. I mean, don't let my decisions, you know, decide <laughs> your decisions. Uh, if you're cool. watching this and have access to a time machine and you could go back and still subscribe, don't let Mike dissuade you. Exactly. But I, I don't see Dojo being one that's going to demand command huge um, prices. No, honestly, no, no. I really don't. Mm -mm. All right. So here's the other set of six we have. Um, first one is uh, Sub Zero with the oversized jacket. Blah. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, oversized jacket. Um, I'm Life. assuming this jacket's going to be removable, correct? It has to be, right? It is. That that was a piece. Um, do you remember Rise of Cobra, the Arctic Snake Eyes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. Go. Okay. There, there's his jacket. And the legs um, are from the – I'm assuming the lower body is from – do you remember – okay. In Rise of Cobra, there was supposed to be this Arctic Duke, which came with the, the snowboard, the one mm -hmm. that they repurposed for Iceberg. Yeah. That's the body. It was the same uh, legs that were used for Big Bear, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. That's right. It was. Um, this one here has a few interesting items with him. You know, um, uh, I... At first, when I first saw him, I was like, eh, yeah, you know, I just wasn't too you know, completely thrilled on it. Um, he is actually a, a, a maybe for me. I'm, I'm a little tired of the club going overboard 
with adding accessories on top of accessories. If you look at the picture, and especially the larger picture, even in their, their picture, that harness is, uh, that shoulder harness doesn't look like it wants to fit at all. No. And I, it's just, damn it. I, to me, if they were going to do this, a better choice of some of the parts would have been the 25th anniversary snow job because he had that two part removable helmet. I mean, removable helmet, removable hood. You know, you could just pull the hood off the back of the figure. Right. Um, I know David Lane said, oh, that um, he comes with the tranquilizer dart rifle so he can shoot polar bears. The original Sub-Zero just came with a heavy machine gun and a mortar. He did not come with the extra rifle, which means he's another figure that's got too much gear than he can carry. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I really, really, I don't have any attachment to Sub-Zero anyway because he was a Deke era and I just wasn't as into it. And there's just not a lot to love here. He, he, he reminds me of, if you remember a Christmas story, do you remember Ralphie's little brother when mom <laughs> him off? He barely put his arms, arms down. down. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what he is. He is. He's so overdone <clears throat> with this giant jacket and all this crap piled on him that he's just. He's gonna be a statue. Yeah. So yeah, he's he a no for me. He ain't shooting no bears. He, he's a solid no. Okay. He's a maybe for me. Uh, let's move on to the next one. We got a, a cobra officer. Um, this here uh, is basically straight up repaint from the three pack uh, ladies we got earlier this year. Um, I believe that's the redhead. I think she's gonna be a redhead. Yeah, yeah. So, she she basically, if you've got the three pack, you've seen her. This is um, the only difference is the yeah. arms. Is it the um? Because the arms on the they used the helix arms before they went with the um, rise of cobra baroness arms. So, because she doesn't have short sleeves. Is it? That's right. Okay, I'm looking at mine right now. Okay. Yeah, um, this one here, um, I mean, it's a, it, I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a yes to go with the, um, to go with the, uh, the three pack I already have. Um, I kind of thought the one we got in the Toys R Us three pack was kind of the officer for them, but I guess that's why I She's, thought they were going at. But. Well, this is supposed to be the Night Stalker officer. So oh, this, okay, then. this was the the Tanks for the Memories convention set, um, which oh, okay. I, I, oddly enough, never came with tanks. But um, they, <laughs> they used some unreleased um, female tooling, and they, they the club produced these black-clad uh, female troopers. And so they were called the Night Stalkers, and they were actually pretty badass. And so when the club showed their builds for the female Cobra Trooper set that they've already released in blue, in the back of my mind, I'm like, they're going to do, um, I, I will bet, you know, I'll bet a pile of Snake Eyes variants that um, they will probably do a bag, black, a black three pack of them as the Night Stalkers, and they'll announce that at JoeCon this year. Um, and then that's what she's the officer for, which means that the Toys R Us officer is going to be the fugly one out of all of them because that, that figure is just terrible. Oh, the one the Toys R Us? Yeah, I know people are freaking out about the chest on this one and the club one, but the rest of the build is just so much better than that Toys R Us one. I, I just she got, those, she got those big old thunder thaws. Toys she, R Us they used guy legs, which was yep. stupid. Well, that's a whole other topic, but yeah. <laughs> she, she's a keeper for me. I will say that she'll she'll be a keeper for me. Now moving on to the next one, which I am super excited about as as well as uh, my buddy Rick was, is a uh, hardtop. Um, I think this here uh, hardtop was the figure that came with the Defiant. Yes, uh, he, there were two of them. There was payload. There was hardtop. Right. So hopefully we're going to get a payload before it's over with. But hardtop is, I mean. I am not familiar. I think the head isn't the head. I, uh, tall booth. Tall booth, right? And and he noticed. And I'm willing to bet this figure is going to end up being taller than the teeny tiny toll booth was. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Just by look at the legs alone. Yeah, it's going to be. It's a good figure. I like that. It comes. He has a uh, some. It comes with a wrench of all things. I found interesting. Another wrench. wrench, but with him, him it actually makes sense because right. he was. You know, the vehicle that he was on was supposed to be based off that giant. Uh, space shuttle launch complex, you know, that NASA had. And 
that wrench is probably a little small <laughs> for some of the stuff that was on that, but it still looks awesome. Yeah, this figure here, uh, the club did a good job on, on actually really giving what the fans want. And I think the fans really wanted a hard yeah. top. Just give us the payload eventually, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, I think the uh, – isn't that one item in his hand at the wrench with the other – isn't that the uh, medical thing from uh, Lifeline? I actually think that is the same case that came with Salvo. If you remember, Salvo uh, had that um, had that briefcase that they retooled the vintage accessory of. You know, it looked like it was a locked case. Right. Um, okay. I think that's Salvo's case, which – I'm glad to see them getting some use out of it because I am getting sick to crap of that one brief that one briefcase that has the pop up laptop and the S the Scorpion SMG in it. Like oh, seriously, yeah. take those, throw those off of a boat on the way <laughs> back to China, and never bring them up again. Um, so yeah, and you know, and again, the the torso that was used. Well, the arms I think are mouse. Um, the the torso is the one that was um, from. Was it was a retaliation firefly? Um, was used for Flint at the Comic Con set. The legs are what twenty fifth Zap, I think. Um, this build solid. I really like the fact that his turtleneck and the inside yeah. of his sleeves match like match, that. Yeah. That uh, I look. We dogged the club a lot on stuff. This this is not an instance where they deserve to be dogged. This is nope. remarkably solid. Oh yeah, definitely. This, like again, yeah, definitely a keeper on this one. Yeah, um, uh, we're gonna go directly down because crosshairs will be the last one. I have to bring up another picture for him. Okay, but uh, uh, ramparts the next one here, and I don't know too much on ramparts, so enlighten me a little bit on this one, Fred. Um, Rampart is a Deke mm. era character again. Um, he was the coastal defender, if I remember correctly. Uh, Rampart's big claim to fame on his file card was, you know, you have to remember when these characters came out, and he was he was a video gamer. So, you know, in the early days of video gaming, his reflexes were crazy good because he supposedly played like a, like all these hours of video games, and so um, became crazy good at it. Um, I originally when I when they announced him, I thought they were going to use the Pursuit of Cobra Dusty alternate head because Rampart had like the hat, but he had the like the the scarf kind of going around and he had the right. goggles and I thought well that head's pretty close it has a gas mask on it but it's pretty close but the club surprised us um they went with um this is another this is the third uh Jokon uh head reuse this is blocker um and they just put the goggles down over his eyes and then the arms are the upper the whole upper torso is the 25th I'm in 25th, listen to me, the Retaliation uh, G.I. Joe Trooper. If you notice his belt, that's the same one that came with Cross Country, um, the Renewal Cross Country, because you can see the the stars and bars in the top buckle. And um, oh. I'm trying to remember what his legs are from. I cannot, I'm trying to remember. His legs are, oh, his arms are Data Viper, I'm sorry. And his legs are from the Rise of Cobra Flash figure. Um, they, they went so far, um, his weapons are, you know, I mean, they, they didn't really recreate his, his vintage gear cause he had like a launcher and some stuff, but he's decent. I gotta say, I'm not a huge Rampart fan. He's in Deke and Deke is painful to watch. Um, but this is one of the better ones in this FSS, which from listening to Mike and I talk, we've probably set the bar fairly low. Um, but he's a keeper for me. Yeah, I mean, he's a cool-looking figure. I mean, he was going to be a keeper regardless. I just didn't remember the whole history on him. So, yeah, he's definitely a keeper for me as well. Yeah, he's another one of the the uh, class, I believe, the class of 1990. So we're, we're really getting a ton of those 1990 Joes anymore. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and interesting to note, that tripod weapon that's behind his uh, right leg People have kind of talked about where that came from. If you remember the end of the DTC line, there was that wave of figures that were canceled and then that the club released. And it was what? Outback, uh, Cobra Officer, Munitia, and Lieutenant Falcon. That gun originally came with that DT with that DTC slash Club Falcon. Okay. All right. Move on over to uh, this is Captain Skip. And I'm assuming, because I'm not too familiar with it, that. Uh, 
he went with Big Ben from two years ago? Um, okay, so, boy, I'm going to butcher this, but um, Captain Skip is one of the Palatoy characters um, from Action Force, and Captain Skip was never an O-Ring figure. He was, back in the day, you know how Palatoy, they did their own, and then, then they partnered with Hasbro and started using Hasbro figures and bringing them over, which is why we get characters like Gaucho and some of those. Um Captain Skip is a Z-Force officer. Um, so he's basically, this is his first, like, G.I. Joe build figure, as far as I know. Um, okay. You know, the, the, the Lieutenant Stonehead from Rise of Cobra, um, a really good choice. Um, he, he basically, um, he, he, I like, the, the thing I like about him is he is actually going to be a really good match for, like, Jammer. Um, and some of those he's, he's, um, okay. Sergeant Stone with, I think shock trooper arms and the DTC Cobra officers web gear. Um, it's funny cause you know, he's British, so God love him. He's coming with a union Jack, um, which is kind of, a, kind of okay. Because when you start to look at like quarrel and bombardier and jammer, and technically if you want to count big Ben with them, you've kind of built this. Oh, and gaucho. Because Gaucho mm -hmm. was actually um, part of Action Force as well. Um, you're building this little British um, GI Joe equivalent lineup, and he with that flag, he makes a good centerpiece for it. Um, so, I like I said, I I know nothing about the character um, from the fiction. You'd have to go over to like Blood for the Baron and read through the Action Force comics for that. But uh, I like him. Uh, maybe it's because I'm a Doctor Who fan and of old school Doctor Who, and he reminds me a lot of Sergeant Benton. And uh, um, from unit, so yeah, he's a he's a keeper for me. Uh, for me, because I don't know the history, and I just he's actually no for me. But okay. with me saying that, he's a cool figure. Don't get me wrong; I think he yeah. looks really good. He's just not for me. I think if if you were someone who kept like Jammer and Quarrel and some of those and Gaucho, or as I like to call him, Mardi Gras Gung Ho, um, yeah then then you're going to want skip because it kind of helps you build up you know this this extra team and this is something that you know the FSS is good about um this is in, instead of giving us an international repaint they're giving us an international character and i think there's a difference um a new character is always welcome at least at least in my collection um versus just uh, a, a, an alternate color scheme not as much, so yeah, I, I I'm pretty pleased with this. I don't think we're ever going to get modern Red Shadows. That being said, I I just don't see the club with so little time remaining uh, actually doing making that decision. Uh, then again, I never thought I'd see the club put cramming nine bats in a box set either. So <laughs> you know, go figure. Um, Oh, I know what Mike's looking for. Um, try looking on the cl uh, the club's page because they, I think they posted an update on their uh, Facebook page as well. Uh, they did. I just, I guess I did a side by side. Yeah. Photo. Let me look real quick. I no, I, I posted it. What what Mike? I, I posted it here. If I posted it on the uh, unofficial site. What Mike is looking for, I think it's the unofficial actually. Um, is and this was a weird one. The club just out of the blue. They because again, it's proof the club does listen sometimes. Yes, they do. Um, the club that when the last figure that we haven't talked about is Crosshair, um, who was a Valor versus Venom era sniper. Um, he was part of that group of new Joes with Verona and what in um and Hacker and Barrel Roll that were all introduced in the Devil's Due comics and um. I, I like Wide Scope. Wide Scope was he wasn't low light. He was a little different. Um, he was originally introduced in a um, have, featured in a comic arc um, called History Repeating by Brandon Jerwa. And one of the cool things in there is they had it was and this 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 arc. I'm not going to go on forever, but this arc uh, involved uh, the 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 descendants of Vance Wingfield, who was like one of the early Marvel villains, and in it, they had to make it look like um, they were faking an attempt on Wingfield at an airport. And so Crosshairs is the one, and he shoots and he misses, and um, 
you know, Flint calls up, I think, to him and says, or Falcon calls up and says, good job. And he says, he says, yeah, thanks. But he says, you know, we're not going to do this again. I have a reputation to uphold. And I loved that because in one little bit of dialogue, it's like, man, <laughs> Crosshairs is a professional and he, his reputation means a lot to him. So when the club first released him, um, he was not the most outstanding of, of builds. Um, it was decent, but honestly, and I'm not trying to drag on the club. He came across like a, like a, like a bad custom, um, you know, and the club, the club pretty much redid him from the ground up. So, yep. uh, well, not the ground up. They redid parts of him. I should say he's got, you know, the shock trooper legs, the pursuit of Cobra torso, when they first released him, he had the same web gear as the original Crosshair figure. And again, kind of like what we were saying with Verona, he had monkey arms because there's no way he was going to put him down. The web, the web gear just looked too bulky. His hat was kind of this cobbled together thing where they took a, a boonie hat and they put goggles over the top. Again, accessories over the top of accessories. And and the scar, the neck, none of it looked really that great. No. And they went back and they gave him new web gear, new hat, new web, new scarf. Um, they gave him the boonie. Again, it's the boonie from the um, pit trooper because he's got the pit trooper head. But he looks good. And I even think it's interesting that when they did the second mock-up, they changed the pose of yep. the figure um, <laughs> to make him look a little more badass. That he's holding that that wicked-looking uh, revolver that is yeah. so... He, I mean, this for people who don't know, the one on the right is we were originally going to get at that time. That was a no for me. But once they put up the one on the left, it's a definitely yes for me. Um, yeah. He, they, like Fred said, they took around from bad custom to a badass figure. Yeah. So he, but, yeah. He really, he's a real improvement. Um, I, I almost wish in club if you're listening. They're in that group that they, there was, and the reason I always talk about this group that was introduced in the comics was the fact that it was a single page that showed all of these Joes together. And it's where they debuted Verona's new look. And um, uh, Mariner was one of the other characters in there. He was featured in the comic um, quite a bit. David Adcox, he was a seal. Um, Club, if you're listening, you want to kind of surprise fans, come up with a build for Mariner for the next FSS. I think I think you'll be surprised that, that the reaction, that here's a character that was in the comics that I don't know if he was supposed to be a figure and it didn't happen or if he was just a comic-only creation, but I think you'd go a long way to winning some folks, um, you know, some hearts and minds by doing something like that. So, Yeah, this one here, um, he has the, um, what is that, the uh, shooter's case in the back? Yep, that's shooter's case and rifle, which as many of you know, does not stay together well at all. Um, so, but then again, if you have a vintage crosshairs, you could just give him crosshairs. He had more of a traditional looking sniper rifle. Um, so you could just give him that and be perfectly fine. But, you know, the thing about crosshairs is he, he has that look that to a civilian like me looks military enough to be practical but still distinctive. You know, you could put him next to low light. You could put him next to um, mouse and they're three different Joes. And I, so I really, I really dig this figure a lot. Yeah. Like I said, uh, he's a good figure. Uh, he was a, yeah, he was a no at first, but now he's a yes. So that gives us all 12 figures that they have put out. Or yeah, just it, real quick. He actually went from one of the weakest to one of the strongest in the entire FSS. He did. He did. So what do you have the score at? Okay, so this might be who. First of all, Mike, do you think who do you think liked more was yes on more figures? You or me? I'm gonna say you. Yeah, I was surprised by that. Um, How many did you have? We have a yes, no, maybe. So Mike has seven yeses. Yep. Four noes, and one maybe. Yep. Um, for Fred, we have eight yeses two no's and two maybes so it's now which one do you think is the best of the whole set i i honestly i think you're looking at him really okay i i in all honesty um before they changed him um ghostwriter 
was I'm not going to call him Jonas pound, 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 pound Jeffries. <laughs> um, <laughs> before they changed him <laughs> in my mind, it was, um, it was, it was probably ghost rider. Um, just because I've always liked the vintage character. So, you know, again, we're, you know, nostalgia plays in and I always liked the character. Um, after they changed him, Damn, um, I'm giving it to um, Crosshair. Crosshair is exactly what I wanted from an FSS figure. He he just looks that that rebuild just looks badass. The color scheme on the legs is badass. The colors, I mean, they they took Hasbro's design and they ported it over fantastically. So mine is going to be uh, Hardtop. Yeah, it, Hardtop's up there. He's yeah. He I, if I had to go top three. It would be um, Hardtop, it would be Crosshair, and it would be Verona. Um, I, uh, look, a lot of people love Guillotine. Guillotine's a little too fan wank to me. You know, look, he's a badass bald man with a skull, mm. with a spinal column sword and an evil mask. Like, okay, that, that's great if you're being designed by a 12-year-old. Uh, <laughs> I crosshair is where it's at for me. I'm going to get way more use out of crosshair. Yeah. Um, also, we will go ahead. And I'm pretty sure I speak for you as well that the worst one is windmill. Oh Jesus, yes. Okay. So <laughs> we're in agree. We're in agreement on that one for sure. Uh, uh, it, it's pretty much windmill and do dojo sitting there at the bottom of the list, going, "Love me, love yeah. me." Yeah. No, because they're just awful. Yeah. Uh, got a couple quick questions here. Um, Christopher Kelly has asked. Um, I'll ask the second question first. Additionally, do you think we'll see one or two more FSSs before the current contract expires? We were talking about this before we came on air, and we think there is a slim possibility that we might get two more. I, yeah, we, Mike and I are both kind of, we couldn't figure out why the club just rushed this one. Yep. I mean, they never, they never launch an FSS really before Joe Con because. That's what they. That's the big thing with the JoeCon panel anymore. It, exactly. the, Joe Con, the, the club roundtable panel is the FSS roster. That's right. And you do know that this year's club panel roundtable is going to have a uh, Darren Dupree in it. Yeah, yeah. Daryl is going to be there, and Daryl is going to talk about the <clears throat> ASCON San Diego Comic Con GI Joe exclusive. I have a feeling it's going to be that canceled rock and roll. Yeah, uh, the concept case in a vehicle. It'll probably be a two pack, you know, a vehicle uh, driver pack. But um, I don't have any inside information. It's just pure speculation because they've been whittling down that concept case between Toys R Us and um, um, and everything. Uh, but no, I uh, given the fact that they rushed this out and knowing the club and the club is looking at this after this year, they've likely got one Joe Con left. Um. If they drop FSS six this fall, uh, shipping it, they could, in theory, try to do a sign up for FSS seven in January and oh, FSS Christmas. eight um, next summer before the next <clears throat> JoCon, yep. and then it's done. They could because they could um, be I I think for them. As long as they're not like developing, I, I don't know how their legal contract is going to work, but like with the Transformers Club, you can still buy Transformers exclusives. Yes. They're just not doing any more, and there's no more club. <clears throat> so I don't think the club is going to be able to produce anything after next December, um, unless a miracle occurs for them. <laughs> so, um, I think as long as they've solicited it and taken orders for it, then we might have two FSSs left. That's just, again, pure speculation on my part. Mike Mike seemed to agree with it. So and Yeah, just, they... Um, well, on that end there, um, what you had mentioned about the Transformer exclusive sell still for the Transformer webs or uh, page yeah, is yeah. that according to uh, Savage, and he told me this at a uh, Joe Con was that um, last year was that he gets one full calendar year from the date their contract expired to keep the, the club store up and afloat okay. to my understanding. So, so my understanding is that December 31st of 2017, is when the Transformer Club store will close, to, is my understanding. So Might then, switch over to something else and be able to still sell the product. 
so then for us it would probably be this so, so you know it's interesting the way you phrase that about how they'd switch over to something else to still sell it that means a lot of fans were originally speculating last year when they got their extension that oh man we're gonna get the month it's the fire sales coming you oh, know yeah. and and given the club and their pricing structure i i think that that just causes papa savage to not be too happy so i i just don't see that there is going to be a fire sale well, the um, the Transformer one did a pretty decent sell. It just ended on May 31st. Uh, mm -hmm. They had a 2015 uh, BotCon set. Uh, yeah. Over, it was a 50% off. Oh, wow. So, I mean, they, they'll if they got a lot of product, they're going to move it, and they're going to price it to move. If I had the extra money, I would have picked up an extra one, but I didn't. Yeah. But um, let me get this other question real quick. He had asked, um, what are your 13th figure guesses personally i would like to see crystal ball or hard ball this was coming from christopher kelly as well and you had told me and i didn't hear this yet um was that what was it you told me earlier go ahead and tell me what you told um me. the club had posted oh boy somewhere on their forum that the 13th figure was going to be a dude was going to be a joe and was going to have a new a new head sculpt and was going to round out an existing sub team. He was going to help you complete an existing sub team. Now that leaves us with Mike's favorite, Kitty Force, um, <laughs> Night Force, um, or Battle Force Two Thousand. Because right. we've got all the um, or got, unless they're going to go Eco Warriors, and I don't see that happening. Because. The unannounced, the, you know, of all Battle Force 2000 of the official members, and I'm not counting Recoil in this because of, even though he was pictured on the box with, I think it was the Eliminator, um, I, I get the feeling that it's probably going to be DJ. And for you people wanting DJ at the show, you're if it doesn't happen, boy, the nerd rage is going to be strong with us. If there is not an actual DJ at the con, and I know a lot of people are like, no, it's a sure thing. Nothing yeah. sure. Nothing is sure when it comes to the club, especially because DJ had an international repaint, kids, and sure. that makes me a little nervous when I when when I stumble across that. So my suspicion is it'll probably be DJ because they said new head. And otherwise, I was thinking, oh, if, if they hadn't have said new head, I was going to be, well, it's a no-brainer. It's going to be Night Force with all the other clues. It's probably Night Force sneak peek. But why would the club change the head um, of sneak peek after already having released him twice? They wouldn't. True. Sure. So that's my pick. Yeah, that's what I want to go with as well. I um, mean, we could be totally wrong on that by any means. I guess we'll find out come uh, two weeks. Um, all right, so I'm going to switch over. Um, we're going to talk a little bit here uh, about Hascon. Um, for y'all who don't know, you know, they ended the uh, Transformer Collectors Club and wanted to do their own convention called Hascon, has been, whatever you want to call it now. <laughs> I can Hascon. Yeah, well, you know, and their whole ordeal is to bring in all their international properties together. Um, so they're bringing Play-Doh, My Little Pony, Monopoly, um, and Transformers. Now, granted, um, they were they given us a date last year, and they didn't say nothing until about about a, within the past month. Um, we actually talked about this on Galactic Gumbo last week, and I was busted a blood vessel on how mad I am about this. This is something I will not go to. Um, we, I will click on tickets. And Fred, have you read anything up on this at all? On Hascon, honestly, yeah. Hascon is up against my mom's 87th birthday. And mom's so, going to win. Yeah, so I've it's one of those don't torture yourself kind of things. Um, I, the, the reactions that I did read is that the tickets are not cheap and I've yeah, seen this. Here we, here we go. Right here. Let's go right here to the VIP ticket. Oh, $600. I, I, I gotta be honest now. Hascon has already surprised me because originally it was just Hasbro brands, mm -hmm. but they added in their partner brands. So, if you notice, they're now mentioning Marvel and Star Wars. 
know, the two Disney owned as, as partner brands. I thought that was interesting, which means Stan Lee is now a guest at Hascon. Correct. For $600, if you get to sit down with Stan Lee, okay, I'm going to go on the record. That's probably freaking awesome because Stan's like, what, 93? Yeah. These as much as I, I love Stan Lee. I mean, Stan Lee is one of, there are a few celebrities that will ever truly affect me when they die because they're, they're freaking celebrities. They're not in my life. Um, Stanley is one of them because that man has been such an impact influence on my life over the years with everything he's created and written and right. And, but you know, so if, if the $600 man, if that guarantees me that I'm sitting down with Stan, that's awesome. I didn't see a limit on the number of $600 tickets. So I'm probably thinking that that's just really, that's really yeah. high for an unproven event. It's kind of like a golden ticket is, but I mean, but once we yeah. get some more details here, like the other guest, you know, Peter Cullen, Optimus Prime, Frank Welker, uh, Megatron. Then we get this young lady here, uh, Andrea Libman. Uh, she's a Pinkie Pie and a Fluttershy from My Little Pony. Then let's get down to the let's get down to the real good guys here, dude. Perfect, Nerf YouTube trick shop sensations. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm okay. going to look at that. Okay, th th this is when where Mike and I are showing our age. Um, it, this convention is a little unusual in the fact that it's not geared just to collectors. They are they are clearly gearing this toward anyone that purchases Hasbro products. I mean, yep. anyone. And oh yeah. Nerf is still big, from what I understand, with the kids. Um, I sound like David Letterman. With hey, kids, um, <laughs> but you know, if they want to draw in families, that's that's probably the way to do it. I have not looked up Dude Perfect. I'm gonna look them up real quick on YouTube because I'm curious to see like how many followers they have. Yeah, but it's kind of like with the My Little Pony Girl. Um, my little girl, listen to me. Um, but the My Little Pony voice actress, she's probably got a bigger following than a lot of the the Joe stuff now. So oh, well, let's be honest, there's a lot more following besides Joe. Um, Magic the Gathering lead designer will be there. Uh, VP head of storytelling will be there. Senior holy principal. crap, Mike! How many they got? Okay, they have 18 million subscribers. Jesus. They posted a video called Real Life Trick Shots from a week ago, okay? Yeah. Guess how many views? Probably 10 million. Almost double that. Jesus. 19 million, million views. That's insane. Now, again, what this says to me is that Hasbro is no longer looking at collectors as the focus of their conventions. No. They're looking at consumers. Yeah. And... So from a marketing standpoint, this, you know what, if you're 10, 11, 12 year old is at home watching dude perfect every night, he's probably going to eat this up. Um, yeah. There's the one that head scratches for me. Chewbacca's mom. What the crap? Yeah, I know. We all, we trust me. We were going, like you said, I mean, they're not aiming towards the collector. They're aiming no. towards, you know, I mean, how you know, let's look, I mean, while you're on the computer, look up Chewbacca mom. Oh God, you're gonna I don't know if she has her own channel. Let me look her up. She might buy now. She did that stupid video laughing like an idiot. And by the way, I gotta say, because I know John Warden. Um, can John Warden look any more dapper in that photo of his? I John, I don't know if you're gonna be listening to this, but um seriously, man, you look right out of the Kingsman with that fence in the background. Like, way to take an awesome professional photo. <laughs> Like I, I, that just kills me so much. And then um, there's, uh, Jesus. Okay, so geez. Chewbacca mom videos have millions of views. I mean, we know that she does not have her own channel that I can see. Okay. Yeah. However, she, she performed the national anthem. Wow. So did Roseanne Barr. <laughs> I mean, I and mean, and then you got this uh, Kathy uh, so and so voice talent Spike from My Little Ponies. Again, you probably got a huge following. Probably uh, John Warden. You mentioned uh, Transformers. This one here surprised me. Uh, Daryl the Priest. Uh, very surprised, of course. GI Joe, Stretch Armstrong, Micronauts, VP of Global Brand Strategy for Hasbro. Which amazingly, they're not pointing, you know, doing anything for those three brands directly. So. If I were to get to ask a question during the roundtable, this is what my question will be. be what the directed, hell are you doing? 
Well, we're going that direction. Gerald DeFries, I want to know because I was at BotCon 2016 when the panel for Hasbro was asked what their intentions were to do with uh, Transformers Club and BotCon conventions. The answer we got was, is that you're not going to, it's not going to be nothing different. We're going to go right into something else, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to notice a difference. Bull crap. Where's my 15, you know, where's my, my six, seven figure box set? Well, where's my, where's my, my FSS? So, so, so my here, question to be is, is this what the GI Joe fans have to look like, look forward to after 2018? Here's what I think is going to happen. Um, the box sets, the multi-figure box mm-hmm. sets really only came about when fun pub took over the bot yep. cons, you know, um, before that, if, you know, I have a couple of the exclusives cause I was a big beast wars fan. So like I got the Tigatron and the right. RC, you know, black arachnia mm-hmm. from those years, but th- but they would do like one or two right. singular exclusives. My prediction is that's what they're going back to because as much as like, as fans, we love getting a 15 figure box set. That pushes the cost of your basic, you know, your admission to these things ridiculously <laughs> high. Right. And, I mean, and you know, I th- I wonder if part of the strategy is is to get these toys back, not in the hands of the elite collectors, but back in the hands of you know the casual, the casual collector and even the general consumer. And right. you know, that, it's interesting that how the Daryl is also branded because Daryl's like he's like the Swiss <laughs> Army knife. Hasbro. He's been on Star Wars. He's he. I don't think he's been on Transformers, but Daryl's been on a lot of stuff over the yes. years. Yeah. Daryl's in charge of Joe, Stretch Armstrong, and Micronauts. These are three brands that, as far as we know, the Hasbro has really no plan. You know, they're developing future stuff for, but there is nothing for them right now at retail. And I'm going to go on record now and say I do not do not expect a Toys R Us line uh, this fall. Just no. don't. Um, I don't either. Toys R Us cut the case packs down by half this past year. They blew through the stuff in a matter of weeks, and then it was done. There were like next to no restocks. And then they didn't want the vehicle packs. Yeah. So I think we're done. Um, <laughs> look, you know, again, this is I'm, I'm tangenting horribly, but you know, Joe for a long time has been this brand that's on life support. Mm-hmm. That you know. It, it's 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 not growing, but I think Daryl being there says that they 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 want him there to do something. Right. The other thing is is Daryl also lives in Providence, so it's not like they're flying Daryl in as a guest. Right, exactly. Um, move on to exhibitors and artists real quick. We'll run this down. Uh, prices are crazy. Look at for yourself, man. Thousand dollars for a ten by ten booth, one table. Wow. Then you want a deluxe booth? Bam, twenty by ten, twenty five hundred. But I've read somewhere you can't get two basic booths for a 20 by 20. No. They're only allowed one basic booth per person. Well, but if that makes sense. All, if you want to go all out, get you the 40 by 10 for five grand. You know who they're catering to? They're catering to, they're, they're not looking at like the small stores, you know, that are run by fans. They're not, they're, I don't even think they're looking at like the small Joes. You know, I think they're looking at like the entertainment earths. Big Bad Toy Store. Well, it's Toys R Us. It's funny you, know. you mention that because from what we've read, the rumor runs on this one is, is if you currently or have sold third-party licensed toys, Transformers, oh. you will not be allowed to set up at their booths. Yeah, I will. Again, you're, this is not like, okay, JoeCon and BotCon were not Hasbro run. They were Hasbro licensed. Right. But they were not Hasbro run. Right. This is Hasbro's show. This is Hasbro's playground. This is Hasbro's rules. And I'm still shocked as crap that third party stuff is allowed to exist. Yeah. Like right. I am just really shocked that Hasbro has not come down with like the mother of all ban hammers and just utterly just smited these um these third party companies with like the wrath of God. And I'm not saying that cause I have anything against them because I own quake wave and he's amazing. Um, it's the fact that this is the, this is their copyright. You are essentially making, it's kind of like black major and red laser and these guys, you know, that are using old Hasbro tooling in some cases to produce new stuff. 
um, you're still you didn't develop that. Like you may you're you're using it, but you didn't pay for those molds and those tooling. So I I get it. You know, this is a shift in the architecture. All right. So with that said, I mean, Hascon, in my opinion, is overpriced. Uh, they will have some exclusives. Um, we're not, of course, they haven't announced that yet, but being part of the uh, their $600 package, you can get that. It gives you the opportunity to purchase them is what it is. Um, same thing with FunPub. Um, I mean, in my opinion, all around about price, it's overpriced. Some of the guests don't make sense. And the um, the timing is horrible. Do you know? When do you know started. why I think they brought in? They expanded it out to their partner brands. Well, because you're going to bring in a lot. I mean, I didn't hear uh, that's something new to me. I don't. Um, really, I didn't know what the Star Wars, you know, the, the Marvel, the, the Disney, because you're going to bring in a whole different fandom yes. to it. Do you you bring Stan Lee to an event, and this year. Stanley, this la this current year is Stan's last round of convention appearances. That's right. Now I, you know we we missed him in Des Moines. I was I wanted to get my fiance up to Chicago, and she said no, it's too expensive. Um, Amanda, if you're listening, I'm still going to try to get you to see him once. Um, <laughs> but Stan Lee, I mean, the guy's a freaking legend. Like, oh, and, yeah. and no offense to Welker or Cullen, because those guys are amazing with their fans. But Stan's in a whole different level, and this is his last year. So the fact that Hasbro was able to secure him, because Stan lives on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like he's local. It's not like, oh, you know, hey, we're going to pick you up on the way home from church and take you to a convention. <laughs> um, the fact that they got Stan is huge, and I think that alone will up their numbers. I, I Let's be honest. Um, if you look at Hasbro's brands right now, Transformers, okay, let's take out Marvel, let's take out Star Wars. Then it's Transformers and My Little Pony. That's it. Now, they have big, they have huge fandoms, but I don't know if they're enough to anchor a giant Hasbro-only convention. No. And they had to do something. Joe is dead. I love Joe. Joe's dead. Nerf apparently has a following. Apparently so. Um. <laughs> Magic the Gathering is the other one. Yeah, uh, Magic, Magic the Gathering, Gathering. is huge. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, it's interesting that they're doing that because they own Wizards of the Coast, obviously. But Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. also has a presence at Gen Con. And Gen Con is the largest gaming convention um, in the U... In, um, game convention, I should say, not gaming, because that implies like the casino gambling. Um, the largest game convention in the U.S., in Indianapolis, and that's like 70-some thousand people. So um, the fact that Magic is going to be there is huge. Right. Um, so that's pretty much all on that. Uh, I want to switch to a different kind of subject we've never talked about before. Um, um, I, you know, we're not all collectors of G.I. Joe's. I mean, I'm sure some of us collect other things. I collect, you know, Transformers, G.I. Joe's, and I actually do collect uh, – certain Power Ranger items, legacy items, figures, stuff of that nature. Um, yesterday, a video came out from Austin St. John, who was the original Red Ranger from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He, uh, my opinion is, he's lost his damn mind. Um, okay, I have no idea about this, so you're going to have to enlighten me. Okay, I watched this 10-minute video. This man here has been doing conventions for the past few years or so for, for whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, he has this street crew that, you know, tells him basically this is what you should do, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that, you know, whatever the case may be. Okay. And uh, so basically they went up on uh, eBay and they were seeing what people were charging for his autographed items, what they were asking for. So this man here says, okay, and he even titles it, Red Ranger is going into business. He has stated that he has bought out Pops Funko Pops 406 Red Ranger. He says there is no more out there after they have gone through uh, retailers. Wholesalers aren't getting them no more. He has bought them all up. They are all his. And the reason behind that is, is that he is tired of people purchasing, purchasing his autograph from them, then turning around and trying to get more money on eBay. Yeah, to a degree I can see it, but 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I kind of get that. Like somebody comes up to you in an auto, you know, in an autograph line. Oh, who do I make it out to? Oh, just just sign your name. Oh, so sh I shouldn't make it out to a winning eBay bidder. Got it. You know, Scott McNeil said that to me one year. It's so funny. You should mention that he was in uh, Beast Wars as yeah. Rat Trap, and oh, uh, yeah. we had two box sets. And uh, he made mine out to Mike. And you know, we were it was my first year going to Botcon. We were trying to recoup some of the money, so we got both boxes completely autographed, and you know, we sold them. I sold the second set, and when my wife got the second one signed, he was like, "She, she like, who should I make this out to?" And he, and she was like, "Oh, nobody in particular." And he goes, "Okay, so I should put dear, uh, dear eBay winner." <laughs> it's exactly what he said. But, but, I mean, it's what we had planned on doing, you know. But I mean, apparently there are people who do go to these conventions and they get X amount of items signed, yeah. I guess. But you know, he's always signed in red ink. Now he's only signed in black ink. And if you want to buy a pop figure from him, as he's talking about in his video here, uh, if he's if it's personalized, it's eighty dollars for the 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 uh, Funko Pop Red Ranger, eighty dollars. But if you want it unpersonalized, six hundred dollars. Oh, I see what he's doing because he's trying to eliminate people buying it. Right to resell. Well. To a degree, I see it like this communicator here in the picture right now. He's yeah. selling that with an autograph for two hundred dollars. That's a fifty dollar toy. You know, once you add in an autograph price, these people usually not, like you know me personally. We just had our show uh, two weeks ago when we had uh, yeah. two rangers there, and one ranger was only charging ten dollars for his autograph. Yeah, the other one was charging I think twenty or thirty bucks. Both I mean, of them super nice guys. I, I kind of get it I, in a way. I don't necessarily agree with it, but um, well, I don't either. I, I, like I have never bought. I have. I only have one autographed item that I bought that where I didn't meet the person, and I just was buying a replacement for something, and it just happened to come autographed. Mm -hmm. um, but to me personally, like part of getting something autographed is, oh, you know, it's like this is a memory of when I met them. Right. Um, you know, years ago, a couple of years ago, Sergeant Slaughter was at the local minor league ballpark up in Peoria, and so I grabbed my two Comic Con figures that were carded. You know, went to the ball game that night, and uh, so we're sitting there, and you know, and so they had they announced he was doing autographs, and so I went up, and you know, everybody had wrestling stuff, and I show up with these GI Joe things, and he was going nuts. You know, he's like, "Oh, GI Joe," and he knew all about the figures. And, Anyway, Sarge personalized them. He asked me, do I, do I want to personalize? I said, absolutely. And he looks at me and he goes, you know, someday you'll be able to sell these for a lot of money. And I said, Sarge, I'm never selling these. Like, this is my memory of meeting Sergeant Slaughter and <laughs> having this awesome conversation with him. So, right. but yeah, I mean, I can also understand, like, here's a guy that it's his signature, but other people are making money on it. Now, at the same time, though, it's eBay. No one's forcing people to buy it. Right. See, and that's what I didn't agree with was that the, the even he, he posted in the comments the listings, and it was people who are got to buy it now price that nobody in their right mind would pay $600 for it, you know? So is he going to continue to go to conventions? Yeah, he's he actually, he is actually scheduled to be in Arkansas in September. And I personally plan on, you know, I have a, I um I uh Mighty Morphin uh Legacy Blaster that I want to get autographed, you know. Yeah. And but I've just heard so many horror stories on him and convention goers and stuff. So, you know, in reading some of these comments, it was kind of like, you know, um, you know, one guy was like, Look, I paid a hundred dollars for Dick Van Dyke's autograph. He was well worth it. You're not worth a hundred dollars, but dude, it's Dick freaking Van Dyke. The man's a legend. He's exactly. like he's up there with Stan Lee. Exactly. You know? He charges $100 for his autograph. This guy here is basically, you know, charging more than, you know, in my opinion, Jason David Frank, who is a bigger draw than Austin St. Yeah. John is, he only charges, he has a stand alone, stand, standing order of $40 autographs, $40 selfies. That's all he charges, period. You know, where... I don't know. He wonders if, if, if cost, part of his yet. problem, though, is the fact with Austin St. John's problem is part of is the fact that I know that he was essentially supplanted by Jason David Frank on the show and in popularity. And it's yeah. like, 
Because I read like I, I I don't know why. I think doing one of these shows and you talked about Power Rangers and I got curious. So I was reading up on the wiki on it one day. And it was like, here's a guy that um, you know, he got out of acting, he worked as an EMT for a while, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. But I, it's it's almost like that whole like I'm not in the biz anymore, just never left him, you know? And I I don't know. That's it's going to be interesting. What's okay? Since you're obviously more plugged into the the, and this is way off of Joe here, but since you're more plugged into the Power Rangers fandom, what's been the reaction to this? Oh, there some of them actually. There was quite a few comments of uh, people were kind of you know backing him up. They're like, yeah, you got to do what you got to do to protect your image and all this other stuff. And I just you know some people backed him up. A lot of people did not. Let me just. Uh, Let's just take a quick look at some of the comments. Like, what's here. he charged for an autograph at a show? I was thinking forty or fifty dollars is what he would be charging. But so I mean, what he's charging online is basically cost of item plus shipping plus no, his his the, um, autograph um, fee. Right, because he well he wasn't charging like um, the Funko Pop is a ten dollar figure. So he's charging seventy dollars for his autograph, and that didn't include shipping. Oh wow! So, so like someone's here, you should have been paid a lot more in royalties back then. You know, um, how do you know this thing wasn't being sold for someone to get out of a tight spot? Maybe someone needed to pay a bill or two, and was down on some luck, just trying to see the the good in some folks and give someone the benefit of the yeah. doubt. Um, you know, it, you know, a lot of this. You know, Austin St. John replying is not him per se. Yeah. He has people working for him who are answering these, who I don't think are, you know, you know, not really being, you know, my opinion, tell them what they should be saying. Like, don't tell your child, uh, tell them, don't be quiet as a baby. That was something stupid. Um, people just asking, blah, 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 where are you going to you know, there's some questions some people have asked, you know, about just when you're coming there, how much I want your autograph, but I'm not rich. You know, I mean, no. I mean, of course, I questioned, I sent a question in. I didn't get a response back. I can't remember what I had asked about it. Um, I think it was about one of his figures. But they, that's just something, you know, like I said, this is just his personal, you know, personal page, but his fan page on Facebook, if you want to go check out the video. I know it's not Joe related, but I just thought yeah. it was something interesting to add now- to the. Of the Power Rangers in that photo, because I know he was like the core dude. Well, he wasn't on the show very long. No, he was. He was in the beginning, and then Tommy came along. I see. Like I know the only reason I even know about Power Rangers is because it came about. God, when I was graduating high school, and then um, I had back surgery in college, and I spent um, about a month and a half with pretty immobile, and. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you we didn't have cable in the room where I was at. So I watched a lot of broadcast. And uh, in the afternoons, it was either soap operas or Fox Kids. So uh. I watched far too much Power Rangers for a bit. And so, um, but of this group, okay, so Tommy was, you know, of the original group, because Tommy was the add-on. He was the big right. gun. Is Austin St. John the big noise out of this group? I know the Yellow Rangers no longer with us, that she'd passed. Right. Um, now, the Pink, Pink Ranger... Ranger drama and stuff but like she, she just recently uh started getting into uh going to conventions uh she really she's done a couple of them but most of the ones she does she will only work with uh, jason david frank which was the original green ranger oh okay so they kind of go like a duo and that really that really boosts any any show's promotion right there yeah uh, but what Walter, about like the black ranger or the blue ranger um, the Black Ranger, he does shows here and there. You know he's actually 50 years old? No way. That dude is not older than me. Yeah, he's 50. No! Yep. He was the oldest one, I believe. And Holy then, uh, crap! Was he, like, driving the other Rangers to work? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, granted, that's <laughs> like, well, most of them, I think. <laughs> uh, the guy played Billy uh, David Yost. Uh, he still does the conventions. Um, as most people know, he was the... Uh, he was the gay one yeah. um, in real life. Uh, yeah, and they, they like tried to cover it up, and it was – right. Like well, today, it, it would of, be like no big deal. Right. But back, back in the 90s, it was like 
No, we can't have a, gay, a ranger who's gay. No. Besides um, Jason David Frank, he was the second longest running uh, ranger in the TV TV show. So, in Ranger fandom, would he be like the number two of that group then? No, Billy or Jason. Um, the blue one. No, I, I'm trying in terms of popularity. Would it be like Jason David Frank? And then, like the Blue Ranger, and then, yeah. or is the Red Ranger still the more popular one? Red one, you got to believe there are people out there who are wow. not Red Ranger fans. That kind of sucks for the Blue Ranger. Like you stick around all this time, and yep. like the dude that's in the show that leaves is still. Yeah, I mean, you know, you leave, and then you come back for a couple episodes, a little small part in the movie, and then you come back as a series regular for uh, I forget how many episodes it was in Zio as the Gold Ranger. Because okay. he played multiple rangers. He played the Red Ranger and he played the Gold Ranger. This but, is Tommy? No, no this is uh, Jason. Uh, oh! Austin, Austin St. John. Um, now, Jason David Frank, he played the Green Ranger, oh, the White yeah. Ranger, the Red Zero, the Red Turbo, and the Black Dino Thunder Ranger. So he's played five different rangers. He's been considered yeah. the ranger that would not leave. Yeah, well, but, you know, obviously there was something because... Uh, oh, yeah, everyone loves him. He's a great, you know, everyone... Good guy. I mean, I met him about a couple months ago. I went down to Dallas Fan Expo. Super cool guy. I met him right at the, the end of the show. Got a picture and an autograph real quick. And, you know, he was already wore out. But, you know, he still kept a, a smile on his face and that's shook awesome. your hand. I mean, he, he would... Matter of fact, I can guarantee you he was the last performing celebrity who stuck to the end until his line was completely gone. The He reminds me a lot of um, Bruce Campbell. Um, yes. Bruce Campbell will do that for people. Um, I, I went to a book signing of Bruce in um, Boston years ago when his book, If Chins Could Kill, came out. And so he had like a, a session at, you know, he, had, he was it was at a church of all places across from Harvard. And so... He did the panel there and then he started signing autographs and then basically, you know, he, there was a line and then, but the line didn't die. Mm -hmm. And so there was a screening of um, army of darkness afterwards. And then he told all the people who hadn't made it through the line, if they could stick around, um, cause they'd already sold tickets for the army of darkness screening. There was a bookstore that was going to let him go over there. I guess he stayed until like two in the morning and he, everybody that, that was there to see him, walked away with an autograph see and that's really cool you know they want to take care of their fans they those are the people who care about the fans yeah. they're not like the ones that are like uh no we're we're done you know cut the line off they're just gonna have to come back tomorrow or oh, my, hand, my hands are getting tired yeah you're getting paid all this money when you add all that money up man it adds up really quick oh god uh, yeah oh yeah well we're going to end the show off with a little talk on the uh schedule of joe con real quick um if people didn't know, I meant to talk about this earlier. Uh, we all know the Wisdom Custom Classes. If you're a golden ticket, uh, pickup is 8.30 p.m. Wednesday at Pacific Hall A, uh, which I believe is upstairs. I can't remember. It's been a while. You know, I did the videos last year. I was at Disney uh, for the people who didn't know about Disney or the hotel. But, um, you know, just go scope the place out when you get there. You know, find out where everything's at. Yeah. And take the schedule with you. Uh, if you want to be part of the parachute drop, they are doing like they did last year. You have to be golden ticket in order to sign up for it. I believe it's uh, first 25 or 50 people sign up. I believe it's 50. Um, be there early uh, on uh, Wednesday. Me personally, I'm golden ticket. I'll probably be there probably 5, 530. Just, so, you know, meet people. It's, you know, you get there in a good line. You start talking, you get to know people, meet people, they recognize you, they, you know, just bring up a good conversation. So you get in there, sign up, you know, you can do the parachute drop on Thursday. Nope, not Thursday, take that back. On uh, Thursday, though, is, you know, customizing class, which will be with uh, John. Uh, then we'll have the golden ticket, golden ticket package pickup, 4 to 4.45. Then the uh, club store opens up for golden ticket first at five. Then you regular peons who didn't want the golden ticket can start at six o'clock till 10 o'clock at night. Same thing with the uh, club store uh, exhibitors, eight to 10 PM. Then the message board goes up for a uh, room to room trading, which I highly, you know, say, go do that. It's very fun. You never know what people who don't set up as dealers will have in their room. Check out that message board. You'll be surprised what you'll find. You might find a gem that you're looking for. Um, back to the uh, parachute drop is on Friday morning. 
um, where is it at here? 10.30 a.m. is the parachute drop. It, it says uh, pool bar, pool bar. I don't, I'm not familiar where that's at. So we'll all have to figure that out together. Then the uh, regular panel started at 11.30, um, autograph sessions. You know, the first, you know, was that Friday? You're looking at, what time does it open up? Uh, two o'clock, two to five is exhibitor hall. And then, you know, Saturday, whole, you know, everything. Do not miss the club round table at three to 350. That will have um, uh, Darren Dupreece with that, probably talking about Hasbro stuff from the casino night. And then your Sunday stuff, which is kind of whittling it out, not a whole lot going on as far as panels or anything on Sunday as usual. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting this year with no Hasbro presence. Well, um, aside Darren, from probably a small case where they put a, a sample of the exclusive if they have it. Yeah, um, if they're going to have a San Diego exclusive and a Hascon different exclusive. Uh, I think they're the same. You think so? I think the way it was worded um, was that it was the Hascon Comic Con exclusive with a slash in the middle. So I think it's going to be the same thing. Gotcha. Okay. So there's the schedule. Um, we you, do you want to mention or kind of just hit and miss about uh you know I mean I you know we're less than two weeks away from the con we've heard um, plenty of rumors on the internet people you know speculating yeah on what they think is going to be anything um, everyone's hoping for a DJ figure us personally we figure DJ is going to be the thirteenth figure in the FSS six point uh, if there is a uh, DJ figure, there could be a possibility it might be an international figure. We, we've talked about the international figures since they, you know, they're doing some international figures now. So we know that you'll probably get a two pack, three pack, large vehicle, a vehicle with a driver and parachute figure. And that's probably about really it. I think I could think of. Um, yeah. Um, what was my guess on? I have no idea on the two packs, three packs. My only speculation that I had read up on was I heard that there might be was it the conquest. Yeah, I, I'd seen that floating around. That was that, and then thank I God, heard, no Sky Striker. <laughs> and then maybe something called the Law, which is a uh, redeco of. Um, uh, vintage tool or vintage uh, base, as long as well as the. Uh, yeah, it was a rise. It was released in Rise the of Cobra series of Rise of Cobra. Yeah, uh, it's basically like a little flat base with a molded chair and then a cannon. Is it not a dual one? Uh, yeah, it's a the the, the the law is the laser artillery weapon, which I don't get how laser can be artillery because you know artillery fires land. So with laser just keeps going forever until it dissipates. But um, I they, with all the bats, they've got to do something to tie into the bats. Um, your set this year is crazy low on named cobras. And so I would assume that like the three pack, maybe, maybe there's, maybe there's some named Cobras in there. You know, the last, I'm trying to think what the sky patrol convention, the two pack were the gliders and those were, you yeah. named Joe's the three pack was a set of Cobra troopers because it was the Hella Vipers. Yeah, that's right. It was three of them. <clears throat> and so, I, I but, see there but then the Tiger cover. Force here, the three pack were the vehicle pot, you know, where's the gunner crew? Yeah. And so they were all unique. Um, and I don't think there was, and the two pack was. Uh, uh, it was the helicopter, the. Uh, same the, uh, the annihilators uh, annihilators yeah yeah so it. my thought is is one pack is going to be named and the other pack is going to be not so um may it be the worms maybe I, will, I don't know it, 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 this, this set is such a weird mix um if they're going to do a named cobra i could see them trying to update was it hotwire because yes. he was he was the scientist guy that they had with the last time they did a bat set, which was with the headhunters. Right. 
Um, you know, because they they need something. The club, the one thing I'll give the club props for is that they've done some cool characters in their um, their concepts for the Cobras. You know, we got Cobra Mortal the one year, International Repaint. Um, you got Crimson Asp. You got Latal again, International Repaint. Um, but they've done, you know, they've done some cool characters for their villain side. And I, I, I'm hoping I'm wrong about DJ ending up as an international repaint in the set, but it just, I'm looking for something. And after that FSS clue, I'm suspicious that DJ is not, the DJ you're going to get at the con, I'm, my gut is telling me is not going to be the DJ that you want. It's going to be, was it Kurt? Corro his name is Spanish for corrosive. Okay. <laughs> which is like he's like an eco warriors villain. So it's just weird. But because again, all those club hints for neck for the 13th make me think it's DJ. Right. Um uh we're going to we're ended off there tonight. Um two weeks from now um uh, is Joe Con. Um I will be there and we will do a show live from there. Um I, I am Excuse me. I am a. Uh, I'm trying to think in my head the time change. Oh, what I'll have to double check it. But uh, according to the Florida time, I'm going to do it 30 minutes after the dealer room closes, which is five o'clock on Saturday. So five. So be four thirty Central. Four thirty. Okay. So let me write that down. I'll forget. Four thirty. <laughs> I will. I do. I got so many pasty notes over here. It's not even funny. You know what? I just I, I actually want to see Mike start the show before the dealer's room closes. I want to see you like with your on your laptop, right? And you're sitting there, and it's like the door of the dealer's room behind you as people are filing out. And Mike's over here, and he's 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 casting, and it's like he's holding up figures, and he's talking about Joe Con, and it's just all these people behind. It'd be like the Today Show. Like, dude, you know, people, dude, people don't tell me that. I'm not. I'm you know, like, do it now. Happy birthday! And you know. Oh, don't! I might do that now that you mentioned that. I, I'm it. telling you, I was going. I was going to have a whole prop to hold up. The closest prop I have in my office is Cobra Commander saying "Merry Christmas." So, <laughs> you know, Merry Christmas. Um, yep. Let's see. The dealer room closes at five, so that'd be four. So maybe. So instead of you know what, you should start the show half an hour before. So do it at it would be three thirty central. It would be four thirty. And you could have like the reaction. You could literally grab people coming out of the dealer's room and ask for their man on the street. So what do oh, you feel about dude. Joe Con this year? Huh? That, that's a good idea. I think I'll do it. Was, and I, I, I should be problem. able to have Wi-Fi on that. So I'm taking my laptop and everything with me. So yeah. And that's what that's what the plan is to do to begin with was to basically talk about the experience of Joe Con up until the, the show and then we'll uh I will show off what you know we have. If I'm able to walk around with my camera, if I can get set up right there by their case, that's oh. usually that man. That's inside the dealer room, though. Damn, I want to get outside the dealer room. Maybe I can if only you had a tablet, um, a, 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 a mobile-enabled tablet. I actually do have a tablet. I have my wife's tablet. I might be able to use oh, that. Oh yeah, because because you can if it's got front and back cameras. It does. Or you could just do like killer selfie mode of. Well, no. Here's what I'll do is I'll take this. If she has a tablet, if it has a USB on it, then oh, I can, I can new, carry this you, you shiny my, webcam. My new camera I got here, I'll take that with a long cord and just be walking around for like that. Yeah. Yeah, because if you guys, if, if the audience of, of like, you know, hi, mom, the seven people that watch us, you know, notice, um, Mike's got a lot more showing on this on this side of the screen this time because he's got yeah. the wider camera. I took a good, it was a good $40 invested. Let me tell you what. Best Buy, forty bucks camera. As I mean, you even said earlier, that it sounded better as well. Oh yeah, you're cleaner. Yeah, because I, I mean, always stare at Mike's background. Um, oh. because I'm trying to pick out like there's Captain America up there, and oh, every week Captain, I try to pick out something new. And, Captain uh, America was thirteen bucks on clearance at Walmart. That's a twelve inch Marvel Legend Captain America. Those new legends that just came out. He was already on clearance. Clarence, thirteen bucks. I couldn't pass. Damn, I'm going to, to Walmart him. after this show. Yeah, it was him, it. Iron Man, and Spider Man. Yeah, I had to pick that up. And of course, you can see all my, I got my Beast Wars stuff that I got autographed by Gary Chalk at my show uh, two weeks ago. And the funny thing is, is that he was signing all my autographs in the green room. Yeah, and I kept handing him stuff, and it was at the end of the show, and he was just signing away. And 
I handed him this two pack I had just gotten of uh, Optimus Prime and Megatron from Energon. Yeah. And it's up here in this corner over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know what he did? He signed the Megatron side. Well, no, that works. Because when you see David K, you have him mm -hmm. sign the opposite, and that's then you fine. have David K draw an arrow to the other side. Oh, that's that's good. I do. I, I'll get David eventually to sign. Yeah, uh, the show was a, a, a. We had. I wanted more as a promoter, but you know we had a good turnout. Uh, we had yeah. about, I think about sixteen hundred people come through the door. Um, it started off slow because you know for stars it rained the morning of. Oh yeah. And then. Um, we tried something new called an early bird for extra money to get in. It went over okay to a degree, but not as well as I expected. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like I said, once the rain went away, people started coming out. Even my food truck vendor, he did <clears throat> he did right at three thousand dollars for the weekend. That's you know I have friends that run a food truck in this area, and uh, that's pretty solid. Yeah, he did very well. He was. I mean, and of course, I mean, I get 10% of that because, you know, he's the only food truck vendor. And I, you know, oh, okay. So he came over, you know, gave me my, my, my portion of it, which I was really surprised because he told me the year before he'd only done $2,000. Nice. So he, did, he did, he did like nine, almost $1,000 more. So, but yeah, um, good times. I uh, had a good time. We had uh, Jason Font, Justin Nemo, Gary Chalk, um, Santino Carello, uh, Paul Optobotamus, uh, Reinhardt. Uh, good times. We all, you know, had a good time. You know, got to hang out with my buddies who came up to visit. You know, you know, sit in the hotel lobby drinking beer. You know, just having a good time. Good show. Um, so that's why we were on the show uh, two weeks ago. Was I was doing something else. Yep. And, um But everything's worked out pretty well, and then we'll be on two weeks. Um, we will update the time, one hundred percent sure um, next weekend. Um, I'll figure it out, but we'll probably do the show. Maybe like 15 minutes before the con ends, I'll set up outside in the hallway to where I have a power outlet, the computer or laptop or whatever yeah. I use, and then we'll just go from there. And uh, you know, that's a, I'm, that's why I like you, Fred. You come up with such of the goodest, I, best ideas I ever heard of. Because <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that. Because I was going to scream up in our hotel room. God knows who's going to be walking by, looking like what. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is so, be cool. Because you know what, people. Can then they can see themselves or their friends in the there background. You. Like there you go. Hey, so, I know that guy. Yeah. Or so definitely dude. You so. look man, the camera does that 10 pounds on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, catch me in two weeks live from JoeCon. We will do a, a regular show as usual. I will uh knock on wood that I have no problems in signing up on uh the Wi-Fi and getting set up on YouTube as usual. Um we're probably looking at a uh, 4:30 Florida time, so 3:30 uh, Central Standard Time is what we're going to be looking at. All so, right. Or 3:30. Let me write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I got it right now. I forget, man. Central Standard Time. Okay, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate y'all watching either now or later on. Uh, feel free to uh, share with your friends. Tell them about us. Uh, we're just a couple of hack jobs that have nothing better to do every other Saturday night. <laughs> so you all know where to find me at here uh, on Twitter as a BotConFan 1978. And you can also find me now on Instagram as Autobot City Toys with a Z. And uh, you can find me next week on uh, the G1 Hexcron channel under uh, Cybercast and Galactic Gumbo. And Fred, tell them that famous word you know. Joe Battle Lines, guys. You, you, you look, for, you search it. It'll come to me. So, everywhere, Joe Battle Lines. And uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate you. We'll see you live from JoeCon in two weeks. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace out.